Hi there guys, welcome back into the Earth Lodge. Um, just before we get started, I need to have a little drink. What's that you say? I'm drinking out of crystal glass. Yes you are correct. Which happens to be the subject of what this video is about. Because, over the last few years people have been showing me this completely unique crystal dagger about 5,000 years old and was found in Spain um, and it has an ivory handle made out of mammoth ivory I've got the mammoth ivory but I couldn't get the crystal that's been the thing that's stopping me that has been stopping me actually having a go at that and believe you me I have been looking around anyway Last week, when I was touring with um, Maud to wonderful places, we stopped in some shops around the Glastonbury area, or actually in Glastonbury. And most of the time they didn't have what I wanted. No idea what I was thinking, really. In fact, um, there's a funny story with this. But we're going to open this up, we're going to have a look, and we're going to find out whether it's any good for the job in hand. There's actually two bits in here, one tiny little bit, which I thought I'd experiment with, and then, um, yeah, it was expensive. So what we have here is A double, a double termination piece of quartz and what I don't know about it is whether it conchoidally fractures and what I mean by that is when I try and strike a flake of it, off of it whether it can travel through it smoothly I definitely want to try and preserve the length but I've got the width to do stuff with and as you can see there are some imperfections in it but it's all about giving it a whack and seeing what happens so <laughs> when I say that this was so when I say that this was expensive actually this cost me a couple of hundred quid um, but I was advised when I was trying to get hold of some of this that I should be expecting a price ticket of about a thousand pound and perhaps this was cheaper because it's not quite clear and it could be down to the fact it's slightly different type I'm not an expert on quartz I don't know but what we're going to do is I'm looking at this I'm building up an idea I'm going to set up a platform just here and I'm going to try and cast a big flake off of the top. Um, quite an exciting moment, really, when you think there's a couple of hundred quid at stake for me. Just getting my leg pad on. But while I'm doing that, I'm thinking, I'm going to know whether this is any use, even before I've struck it, probably with the deer antler, because I've got two tools at my arsenal. I've got this deer antler and I'm going to use this this is quartzite that's quartz um, but I'm going to use this quartz uh, quartzite pebble to set up a platform and it's going to be in the release of them tiny little flakes I'm going to find out a hell of a lot about that I can see um, imperfections in it wish I could see it in the flint like that um, so, from the word go, wish me luck, let's see what we've actually got here. Oh, 
Now that. That's not the best news in the world. Um, because it's rugged. It's not... Um, it didn't break smoothly. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to abrade the edge like this. I've made the edge strong now. And then we'll turn it over. And I'm going to hit that right there with the deer antler. Bear with me, I'm just building up this one. <laughs> you see. <laughs> So this is, this, if it had been in another material, would have come off in one piece. What that consequently tells me is that this is not um, conchoidally fracturing very well. When you look at the surface on there, it's really, really rough. Now... quite funny because when I was in the shop I said to the lady I said uh, is there anything you do on that price and she said no she said that's what it is I said oh okay I said because it's a bit of an experiment she goes well what are you going to do with it I said I'm going to smash it up <laughs> and she looked at me as if I was balmy I said yeah I actually am <laughs> and that does actually look like what I'm going to do um I don't need this as a crystal, I need this as a dagger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push on a little bit deeper and uh, see what happens. Now interesting, interestingly enough, what the hazy stuff that I can see is sitting closer to this side and the cleaner stuff seems like it's over this side. So I'm going to keep trying to take the bottom off and things might clear up and they might get a bit tidier. You never know, they might not. So I have had a crystal that does break clean and um, what I believe about it is is that it was like a plate of crystal instead of crystal that forms by growing the crystal that I had before looked like it had developed in the crack of another rock and it was clean and it was clear and that's the stuff which I've been trying to get hold of and quite often when I mention it to people um, they have no idea what I'm talking about because they haven't actually seen it we're talking about a rare substance really And also, interestingly enough, you can see how all of this stuff is coming off. 
is just collapsing. It doesn't really have any um, integral. Can't hold itself together. That was one of the cleaner flakes so far. Well, I certainly can't take it back to the shop. Tell him I've got a dud. In some respects, it's napping okay. I mean, its behaviour is fairly consistent. I know one thing, it was never expecting this to happen to it. Right, so we cast quite a lot of flakes off from the underside and that's getting a bit flat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and take this hill off here, from over here. <coughs> Which involves going back to the, um, the quartzite rock and putting a platform in to this side here which brings the edge of the stone up higher towards the, t the point that I want to knock off and this could be massively this this could actually be the deciding factor this it might not like what I'm going to do to it at all Yeah. Cool. And that went right over the top there. I normally brush that material off, the debitage off on my hand, but these little micro shards are stupidly sharp. Um, so that flake went right over the top, that was a success. Come down here a little bit. Wait, get out there. And I really need to deal, I need to make a bold attempt at this tip here. Because if this gets too thin, I don't want to be striking the tip. Because we'll just snap it in half. Okay. Right, so you know what? Even though it's not napping how I wanted it to, it's still napping. <laughs> and I'm feeling like I would like it to work out. Because I'll go with it, you know, I'll still, if I can get what I want from it, I will still put it into, um, I'll still put, I'll still put um, a mammoth tusk ivory handle on it. But that all depends whether we get there. And um, I'm not sure. The other crystal that's very close by is the lens of my camera. That's one thing I'm hoping I don't break which happens to be seven inches away from this point of impact. So can you see there appears to be um, a crack laying in there that's always been in there at the moment it's holding itself together what the um, future of it is 
was undecided, I guess. See, even with all of that strange, rugged surface, the flakes are getting across the stone. They're doing what I'd want them to do. So that's good. So we're making a crystal dagger. Let's remind ourselves. It was originally made over 5,000 years ago. That must have been um, quite a thing. What isn't going to get included in this film is the production of the ivory handle. And I've been looking at that closely because it seems like a two section piece and it's carved and quite intricate. See what I'm saying? Look at it, look at it. you can just see from these flakes. This is quite an ordeal for this stone to be going through. So every time I take something off, I've got to set a situation up with what's called a platform prior to trying to get it. Keep getting little bloods. probably do with the little caption don't try this at home <laughs> and incidentally if you know more about quartz than I do which is easy because I don't know a lot about it And you happen to know where I can get a piece that would break like glass. I'd be interested in that. I was told by the experts who are traders of such things that A, they couldn't get a bit at the moment. Or didn't have a bit. And if they could get it, it was going to be costing me the tune of about a £1,000. So that's quite a lot of money for a rock that you're going to treat like this. Because if it's anything, because if it's anything like flint, one bad shot, and that's the end of it. You imagine smashing into a thousand quid's worth of stone like this. That get your nerves. That get your nerves going. Something's happening, guys. 
We're making a crystal dagger. And it may be the first time it's been done since the original 5,000 years ago. And just for the record, it could all go wrong at any time. So just for the record, that's what we're up to. So I've got to narrow it down at the back. something for the nerves. Incidentally, you know, piece of obsidian, beautiful material, flint with nice features in it. Now, so what is a rock ever worth? How do you put a price around such things? Well, some time back, I sent a rock to America for a friend of mine, and that was a it was the, one of the finest bits of flint I'd ever had, and that cost me two hundred quid just to post it. And that was a gift. So, when a rock's right, a rock is right. It's worth its weight in gold, especially to us nappers. And if you know me, one thing you do know is I've never met this actual dagger. But I get a strong sense. I'm talking about the Spanish one. I've got a strong sense that it's going <coughs> to... I knew that that end was coming off. Well, I didn't know that, but it has come off. I've got a strong sense. I don't actually mind. Because from what I read, the actual dagger is eight and a half inches long. And that probably includes a handle. But that's a, that's a fact or a statistic that I don't actually know. Um, so with this being about five and a half inches long now, once you've got your handle it kind of makes sense that makes so even though that little back end has come off it doesn't matter it's one of the things we do as modern people these days we're big knives and all that sort of stuff but in the stone age they Generally, they didn't. They had things that worked, the things I could use, and the size of the dagger wasn't ever going to help you. I think big daggers like that kind of come into the territory of walking through jungles and using parangs and machetes. It nothing to do with knife skills, really. All I know is every time I hit this, 
I need to make that strike worth 200 quid. Because <laughs> if I give it a 30 quid, I'd see a game over. In other words, I've got to stay in charge. So if you've got this far through the movie, well done. I decided not to shorten this movie and make it watchable in a minute and a half. I felt this deserved some detail. So full movie, full length. Right, that's not too bad. Keep getting little things bite you, biting me in the finger. Tiny little shards, they kind of hang around, they lay there. If this was flint, I'd be really pushing to make it micro thin, really thin. But with this, I know I'm not going to get it. If I try and do that, I'm not going to get a dagger owing to the nature of the material. Up an area that as you can see um, if you're kind of calculating doing this such an expensive rock as what I was mentioning that is a bloody big deal from anyone's perspective And I've learned during making this, I thought after I'd hit it once, I honestly thought there was about 20 hits before I'd walk, walk away from it and say, do you know what, there's no dagger in that stone.
and um, in a lot of ways I was wrong because we have a dagger right now maybe just um, a little bit of trimming at the back here like on the original so that licks that will accept the journey into um, the piece of mammoth tusk Well, hmm. I guess we did a thing. I'll show you the mammoth tusk I'm going to be using. That is a piece of mammoth tusk out of the Arctic tundra. Um, and that's going to be going in there like that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That was um, a challenge from anyone's perspective. Now, that challenged me. Um, if you did enjoy it, do us a favour. Like it, follow my posts, share, subscribe, or whatever, and um, we'll keep on. There'll be another part to that journey. All the best. Cheers.